right. Okay, so we're, we're looking at um, culture, kingdom culture specifically. Um, and uh, so some of the things to understand about culture is uh, that these are uh, values, these are customs, um, and we are, you know, why, why are we looking at culture and why should we be concerned or why should we give it importance? Um, because it involves people and uh, and people do have, whenever people gather together or interact together, uh, you know, there, there are these intangibles you know, like uh, uh, some things we maybe can spell out the rules of engagement. Right? Certain things are cannot be spelled out, and uh, a culture is a very strong. Uh, uh, I would say it's a strong instructor. Or, uh, it can be a, a very strong. Um, uh, I forget the word. You know, a very strong. Um, it would say a characteristic which can actually, uh, you know, uh, enhance the team, right? Enhance the team, enhance the organization. Um, if it is, if it is the right thing, if it is the right culture. So when we look into the Word of God, uh, you know, we know that all customs and everything is transcended by what is of the kingdom, right? So when we look at the word of God, look at the word of God, and we, we when we see, okay, this is something that we see as the culture of God's kingdom, right? Uh, in dealing with people, in interacting with people, this is something that we see as culture. So that can be something that, uh, or that has to be something that we can intentionally create, nurture, and keep consistent over a period of time. Because culture requires that consistency. Right. Uh, that consistent nature, or uh, it requires time. Right, it is something that needs to be done int intentionally, and uh, and it's 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 good uh, when it when we see you know this uh, healthy culture uh, in the in the team in an organization. Right, so um, so it it is developed over time. It has to be created. It has to be nurtured. So we we see several scriptures like. Um, let me just share. Okay. Yeah. So what you see coming up. Yeah. So we see uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 2. Okay. Where Paul says, um, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I deliver them to you. So he's talking about some some customs or traditions that he delivered them. Okay. Um, again, in Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse fifteen. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. So here he's talking about something that was verbally done and also you know instructed through the epistle. Um, Chapter 3 and verse 6. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. So um, and then you know when we when we look at Second Thessalonians 3, uh, let's just turn it there. 3 and verse uh, 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 Verse six, right? So we 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 go on, and then we see that um, the context of that. Okay, for you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you, uh, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, um, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. Um, and he goes on to say, you know, even when we were with you, we were commanded you if anyone will not work, neither will he eat. Okay, so so uh, talking about a very uh, something that is of uh, of a high moral value and character, uh, how they should actually uh, interact, and as ministers, 
what kind of an example they should they should leave behind okay and they, what they should actually have in their own lives as they minister so we see that okay this is something that they commanded something that they uh, you know uh, led by example and something that they taught as well so so this thing of kingdom culture okay uh, based on the word of god right? some of these uh, way of doing things right they may not be chapter and verse but we see based on well the truth of god's word the counsel of god's word uh, we apply that in our in our lives okay so the thing is that it needs to be taught first thing okay so it needs to be taught uh, to people and it needs to be followed by us because we re reproduce after our own kind okay so if we want to see a certain kind of culture in the team then we need to have it ourselves as leaders in our lives right or follow that in our lives very strategically like for example if we want our teams not to indulge in backbiting or gossiping um, you know talking ill of others or pulling others um, you know down then we need to have that example ourselves right because they are observing uh, us as leaders and we need to have that in our own lives so, um, so that's very very uh, very very important that the culture that we have or we follow is what we will reproduce in our teams so that is something uh, important so whatever we want to see you know, whether it's excellence whether it's integrity whether it's qualities like humility and so on um, we need to have it ourselves we need to pursue or demonstrate it and walk in it ourselves and then we can expect to see it in the in the team so uh, so not only do we teach but also we follow it ourselves and we will see it right so it could be things like uh, you know punctuality and uh, you know simple things like that so we follow it in our in ourselves we follow it and then we will we can expect to see it uh, as we teach and as we reinforce we can expect to see that culture unfold you know like maybe some will catch it immediately um, others will catch it over some time and then but we know that that is the culture and culture has this way of reinforcing you know, people reinforce it within the team right no longer does it have to be the leader you know coming and saying you know you know this is not right this is how we need to do but but others people themselves reinforce it one to another okay and say okay this is the expectation and we need to do this let's so let's do that right okay so uh, as part of that we need to clearly communicate okay, it's very important what is accepted and what is not accepted as part of culture now, for example if you look at the core values you know there's something that we uh, have here in all people's church and we you know we share it with people who wish to be uh, who wish to become members of church we we share with them okay so this is what we have as our core values you know integrity excellence pioneering uh, unity opportunity and relationship in other words we're saying that okay these are things that are of um, value to us that we want to hold dear uh, integrity is something that we don't want to now, compromise on excellence is something that we are constantly working towards um, and we want it in everything in our own lives personally and also in things that we do uh, as a team right pioneering doing things that has not been done before maybe some new things um, not hesitating to venture into that right unity unity of the spirit uh, uh, you know so opportunity giving opportunity for all to serve in different ways to participate in ministry and relationship you know our fellowship relationship with one another of value which means that you know as we create this things that actually come against it you know things that come against this kim that things that try to destroy this or you know hit at this uh, erode this these values uh, will be watchful and we will not indulge in these things okay so, so 
So only then will the culture be strong. Right? If we allow this, we say, okay, this is what we have as a culture. And we allow those other things to be there, right? Uh, then it's going to be a problem. So so we don't we should not reward anything that tries to erode this these values the core values everything anything that tries to attack these core values we should not encourage or we should not reward okay so we need to you know it's it's a daily thing it's a daily thing it's a it's uh and we need the wisdom of god when we're leading teams to kind of reinforce it we should not like the scripture says you know uh don't grow weary while doing it for in due time you will reap the reward and i think this is applicable here as well many times when we want to we sometimes grow weary and we say okay whatever and we just you know uh, allow things to happen but uh, that's going to be detrimental right and whatever we built over the years um it's going to slip so um don't grow weary don't grow tired right um continue to reiterate encourage um continue to stand boldly firmly against those things which are which would erode these cults you know these values okay. uh, so don't reward don't encourage these things okay um well the the other thing is also to affirm when things are done right to reward that and reward you know, when we say reward, it doesn't mean that okay, you're giving a prize. You know, formally, excuse me. You're not right. You know, giving a prize, or you know, um, no. It's just that complimenting. It's it's just to just to let people know that hey, you recognize that, and I saw that. I saw what you did, and it is good. It's it's it's, it's good that you did that. And sometimes it's just a simple statement reaffirming what they did and that has its own reward right so just to reinfer um, i mean reaffirming okay, that was really nice what you did what you said and how you did it and how you showed up despite you know all the challenges and what you put out there awesome right? it was good and uh, well sometimes it's just one-on-one -on -one. And sometimes maybe it's in a team, you're addressing the team and you just call out, oh, this was done. And I hope, you know, if if people didn't notice, I just want to acknowledge that something that was done by this person, so and so, and um, we really appreciate that. Great going, keep going. So affirming when things do, when people do things right. Okay? Not really flattering. Okay, flattery is, is like uh, making it, a big thing when it is actually not or you know not being truthful about something uh, so all that is flattery uh, but this is you know giving credit to what is due okay in proportion to what is what has happened so uh, affirm and uh, when people don't get it right correct it correct them um, and do it lovingly Okay. One example is uh, that we see in community culture, a culture in a, in a thriving community is what we see in Acts chapter two. Okay, so let's let's see. And this is again from House of God, chapter nine, uh, book by Pastor Ashish. Uh, Acts chapter two, forty four to forty seven. Okay, this is um, this is what we read. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Now, this of course is uh, the context is the early church and the people had come from the surrounding regions to Jerusalem. And uh, it was, you know, during the, the Feast of the First Fruits and uh, the Feast of the Pentecost. And uh, they were there ar around that time. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened. The church was born. And, you know, this was happening. It was a great revival. And daily, uh, people were 
be saved and added to the church. So that people had come who did not have homes, etc. So it says here that they were together, they had all things in common, they sold their possessions and goods and divided them as people had needs and they continued um, with one accord in the temple and so on. Right? So we see this kind of a culture, this kind of generosity and kindness and everything in this community of this uh, early church. Right? So we see several things here, right? They, uh, they, uh, they did it because of Jesus, right? They did it because uh, he was in the center of it all. Okay, so we see that there was, uh, you know, they, they worship together and they praise God together. And, uh, um, you know, they, they, they continued daily with one accord in the temple, meaning they met for prayer and worship and, and studying the word or being instructed in the apostles' doctrine. Um, they, which means they were there with teachable hearts and you know, they were receiving everything. So everything was uh, centered around the Lord Jesus, right? So spiritual growth uh, was not something that was that was in the periphery, but was right at the center. So that's something for us to learn about, you know, about community and church community and, and a culture, uh, a kingdom culture that we can actually foster, right? So spiritual nurture, spiritual growth is uh, is at the center. It's not that just people gathering together and, you know, uh, feeling good about each other, saying nice things about each other, complimenting one another, uh, and, uh, you know, and then leaving. Right, so it is spiritual growth is happening, spiritual nurture is happening, spiritual instruction is happening, and everything was centered around that, about around the person of Jesus. Okay, so prayer, worship, sharing God's word, sharing of material things, all that happened, and it was around Jesus. So, um, so that is a, that is a very important thing, you know, when we gather together as a community of believers. Or this was a community of believers. To have that as the focus. Okay. If we do not have that as a focus, then something else will become the focus. Right? We are meeting for food, or we are meeting for when we say you know, we are meeting for fellowship. Now this needs to be at the center. Okay, of course there will be you know this uh, friendship and fellowship and companionship and, and encourage mutual encouragement and all that will happen as an overflow, as an outflow. This is the center. Okay, so um, character, Christ likeness, like uh, is developed in people's lives. People grow together. Um, so we see several things as an out outcome of this. They're serving each other in love, compassion, uh, equipping one another, empowering one another, uh, and then also encouraging one another. To good works. You know, that's what you know. That's the uh, exhortation that we see in Scripture. You know, um, in in Hebrews we see that exhort one another daily, um, where which you have uh, where, where it is. Um, uh, let me just read that. Um, you know, Hebrews three and verse thirteen. Exhort one another daily, where it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So this sharpening one another, this exhorting of one another, right? encouraging one another, okay? keeps happening. So this is something that we can take back, uh, something that is of value as a community of people. For, uh, and and you know, when we look at okay, us as a church, maybe, and maybe we are put in a leadership position in you know, these kind of settings. Right? Maybe it's a church, maybe it's a team. To have this at the, as a focus. Okay. Um, so that's something that we see as uh, culture. And uh, to uh, you know have these core values, to have these cultures. It doesn't, to have this as our culture, our customs and beliefs. Now, we understand that this does not happen automatically. You know, when we look at 
a, a functioning team, a thriving community, uh, uh, a church community. We see a you know a ministry team that's you know that's thriving and that's having all things that are healthy. We need to understand that it has taken time for them to reach there. It has taken uh, you know them to be intentional about these things uh, to reach that place. Okay, so so those are good lessons for us. You know, when we start off, maybe we are pioneering something. We are starting off something from the ground up, right? So we need to understand that okay, culture is something that I can I can initiate, um, and it's it's not you know it's not an option but it's something that i initiate and, and i want to keep it in place so that it helps this community of people you know, whether it's the core team the leadership team or it is you know the believers gathering together the people of god gathering together uh, well it is going to help you know we having we don't have this as the culture this as the value and you listed out you know maybe a four or five things that you want to based on the word of god of course and we want the kingdom culture to take root and to, to really develop uh, understand it's going to you know, it's going to take time it's going to be it's over a period of time but uh, we need to be consistent and keep at it and affirm it and also be mindful of things that are coming against you know this culture maybe attitudes habits behavior traits and uh, we need to not encourage that and not to reward those things because whatever is rewarded will again be repeated right if you reward something people feel good about it and then they, you know it will be it'll be taken it, it'll be taken as okay i have permission to do this again because it has been i've been rewarded for this so i can do it again so it will be done again right? it will be repeated right so we need to be careful what are we rewarding what are we affirming what values are we rewarding what culture are we affirming okay, when we do that it will be repeated okay and it will take root um so let's be mindful of that okay any any questions now before we go into you know a totally uh, different direction different topic Any any questions? Anything that you might want to add? And do that as well. Right. Okay. So before we go into uh, you know transitions, we are uh, going to be looking at uh, leading through times of transition. Okay. Uh, and typically, this is transitions that could be challenging transitions that could be uh, like say change of leadership and so on right so that is what we're going to be looking at so before we do that i just wanted to ask like um were you able to go through that uh, you know the material that was uploaded um the 18 minute to-do list right um i hope you were able to go through and you know, maybe you can um it'll be helpful for your own daily planning daily implementation Right of those plans. Okay. Okay. So we, we have something called personal productive plan, you know, personal productivity. We're going to be looking at that a little later after this um, after this whole topic on transition, leading through transition. Okay. Okay. So let's look at um, leading through transitions. And uh, we straight away go to, you know, this is a great um, uh, place where i mean there's a place where we see this amazing, awesome transition happening uh which is joshua chapter one right and uh joshua chapter one you know it starts like this after the death of moses okay so moses has been leading guiding uh, this whole nation right right from the start and he's like this big larger than life character and uh Joshua it could always look up to Moses, right? Or look back on Moses for wisdom, for maybe bouncing his ideas, for hearing from God. You know, what did God speak to you, Moses? 
right? So all that is happening. Now here we read, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Okay, so the, the Lord is Lord God is just stating the obvious, saying something has happened, right? Um, something that is so, so something that is probably affecting Joshua every day. You know, he's like Moses is gone. Moses is no more. Now the Lord of the Lord comes. Says Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, there's work for you. Right? You need to do this. Right? So Moses had already laid hands on him in front of the people and kind of, you know, acknowledged that he was a leader, that he was going to be, and according to God's instructions, right? Moses did that, and that impartation of leadership and the mantle was on on him and so on. Um, so the thing is now. For Joshua, this was a big shift, right? There was a big change. Um, this was a big transition. Now, there, he had to adapt to these things very quickly. He had to learn these things. Um, and uh, there's some changes that he had to make within himself. Right? Uh, and uh, one thing is that he was going to be leading, that he was going to be you know, initiating of course, relying on God, of course, depending on God. But Moses is not there anymore. Right? He, he cannot go to Moses uh, you know, for anything. Moses is not there. Now, he had to rely on God directly. And he had to communicate you know, instruction and uh, you know, decisions and everything to the people of Israel. He had to do that. And he had to... Um, he had to do that very quickly. Now it was on his shoulder, right? And uh, well, the Lord encourages him, and he says, "You know, as I was with Moses, I will be with you." Okay, that is what we see in verse five. No man shall be able to stand stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Okay, this great reaffirmation and assurance from God himself. So as I was, so Joshua had, tra had you know, very closely observed Moses and uh, all the things that frustrated him you know, and this kind of relationship he had with God. He had seen all that. So God is saying, you know, saying, as I was with Moses, so, so Joshua would have, you know, uh, have immediately certain things would have clicked in his heart that yes I've seen how you were with Moses and now, now you're saying that as you were with him the way you led him you will lead me also you know this great reassurance and he's saying and I will never leave you nor forsake you okay so these kind of transitions happen in life it could be in formal you know setup an organization or you know generally in life itself where we are giving leadership maybe not in a formal sense but we are leading right so this can be rather abrupt these transitions or it can be planned right unexpected it can be pleasant it can be unpleasant you know all these things so transition basically means changing right changing from one season to another uh, one, uh, you know, one time frame to another time frame. One, uh, you know, best way to explain it is one, one season, you know, one circum set of circumstances and uh, and season to another. Uh, maybe under another leadership. So we are looking specifically as leadership at leadership, right? So transitions. So when normally when there is transition. You know, where maybe a church or a ministry or a team is going through a transition, right? Um, people are part of that transition. Okay, people are part of that change. Now, it could be transition in leadership or one person, you know, who's leading 
maybe a team leader it could be a transition of that of that person you know person is maybe leaving the new person is coming on taking on the responsibility but it is since it is it involves a whole lot of people now people are going to be uh, affected and people are going to have some response to it right and the response need not be encouraging it can be encouraging right for the most part like we see here you know they they all said uh very words the very words that the lord says you know the promise that he gives the exhort, the, the instruction that god gives joshua in verse 9 have i not commanded you be strong and of good courage do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go the same words they actually uh you know echoed that same same thing you know they, whatever uh, verse 18 if you see whoever rebels against your command does not heed your words and all that you command that we put to death only be strong and of good courage so here was this you know here was his response people were actually with it with the vision they said you be strong you be courageous and it was a prophetic you know thing for joshua that they are echoing the same thing which god had told him right? but it's it's not always that way there could be there could be dissension there could be disapproval there could be comparison well joshua you know moses always did this you know why are we doing it this way right there could be comparison moses was moses spoke like this moses did like this you know but whereas you you are like this so you know the way the apostles were compared like right? the people were saying in the corinthians i'm of paul i'm of peter and uh, it was a, i'm of apollos right? they were comparing and and uh, in fact the, they were they had you know made sure that word got around that well where's paul paul his letters are very very weighty but in you know in appearance and words when he speaks uh it's it's not so so much like they were comparing also so leaders will be compared and especially in times of transition and change there is the possibility of comparison and uh you know uh, we cannot escape that there's a possibility that you know the response is not is not uh, encouraging you know they sometimes might you know hold back from supporting and going forward with the new leader so so Sarah, here are some things that we need to keep in mind you know maybe we are part of that transition you know as leaders and we need to uh, keep something you know these things will really be helpful if we are going through a, a transition in leadership Okay, first thing is keep your eyes on the Lord. Okay, so because of that change, if there is a if there's a negative thing happening, right? If uh, if there's uh, you know it's it's not a very conducive uh, environment, it's not a very conducive thing. Just remember, uh, yes, it is a transition, and keep our eye on the constant who is the Lord. Okay, so it helps to keep our eye on him, keep our focus on him because he is constant. Well, all around us, there is change, change in the environment, change in the people, change in the response. People whom you thought were, well, very encouraging are suddenly, you know, changing, changing track. And all that is happening, it's good to keep our focus on the Lord, right? He is our reference point. So, Keep your eyes on the Lord. Psalm 93, verses 3 and 4. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. Floods lift up their waves. Verse 4. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. So verse 3 is just uh, you know, explaining the situation. The floods have lifted up their voice, which means there's, a, you know, there's this sound of many waters, the floods lift up their waves, and so on. He says that the Lord is high. Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. So the, the thing is to keep our focus on the Lord. Okay. So many things will happen 
to take our focus off him, to shift our focus off him. Um, the wind and the waves, just like Peter, you know, he, he took his focus off. He looked at the waves, he focused on the waves, he focused on what was intimidating, what was scary, and uh, what was even life-threatening, and you know, he began to sink. Right? So, so the thing is to, first and foremost thing, very important thing to keep our focus on the Lord. Second one is to make decisions out of a pure and sincere heart. Okay, to make decisions, to make choices, um, our response should be to uh, response should come out of a pure and sincere heart. You know, for the good of the, for the greater good, for the good of the people, for the good of the organizations. Because um, the reason we say this is because you know they will be really tempted to make decisions uh, to probably get back at people to get back at what they're saying so to be tempted to um to to really uh, respond in a way that is not god honoring right? to refute people to to respond in a way that's well that god wouldn't be proud of so when it comes to making decisions when it comes to making those choices at that very important critical time Make it out of a pure and sincere heart, okay. and and in the same lines, guard your heart, okay. guard our heart. So uh, you know, Proverbs very clearly talks about that. That guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of our lives. Right? So guard our heart. Um, don't let fear enter. Okay. So what would fear do? Fear brings torment. Uh, fear. Um, clouds our judgment, right? Fear clouds our judgment. You know, we we make uh, decisions out of fear, and that's not the best course of action, right? We make decisions uh, either it could be fear of man, fear of disapproval from man. You know, especially during the time we want people to really affirm us, right? You know, there to lead and. Uh, uh, the one who was leading is not there, and you are leading, and then we want people to affirm our leadership, like much like these people, and say, we are with you, right? or like uh, the people who are building the wall, you know, they, with Nehemiah, they said, yeah, we are with you. Let's do this. Let's rise up and build. But maybe they're, they're not even rising up. They're saying, you build, we want to watch. <laughs> right? So, um, so don't let fear, fear of man, fear of disapproval, don't let it cloud, don't, or don't let it grip your heart. Okay. So what is the antidote? The antidote is obviously faith. Right? To, uh, to be uh, saturated with faith, to be saturated with the word of God, um, so that you can keep fear out. No, it doesn't mean that we will not experience fear, right? Um, but don't let fear overcome. No, we should not let fear overcome us and take us on that downward spiral. Right? So we keep our eyes on God. We keep our eyes on what He. We we continually continually lean in to what He's saying, and let that be louder than the voice of fear. Right? What he is saying about the situation, what he's saying about this whole thing, and what he has said already, you know, let that be constantly in our ears, right? So that we don't let fear enter in and you know, our emotions and everything goes out of hand. Right? The other thing to guard ourselves is um, to guard our heart against is. Hurt, bitterness, offense, right? because uh, people are saying all kinds of things. Maybe right? people are saying insulting, comparing, uh, putting us down, and uh, you know all kinds of things are happening. And um, we, we, it's, it's easy to actually let our heart be wounded, right? We, uh, we kind of 
come to a place of saying, you know, I, I meant the best for people, but, you know, despite all this, despite all that I've done, and this is the reward that I get, and this is how people are saying, this is what people are saying, and how can they say that? And we get hurt. We get hurt. You know, when we are placing ourselves in a vulnerable way, when we are hard, when our heart is tender, well, there is the possibility, of course, or that we will experience hurt. And as leaders, uh, we will experience hurt. But the thing is to take it to the Lord you know, daily. Keep a short account. You know, take it to the Lord. Uh, keep a short account, meaning you know, don't let that list of hurts. These people have hurt me. These people have said this. Don't let that be a long, you know, record. Keep a short account. Take it to the Lord. Right? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Uh, during that time of you know just communion with him let it all be cast away let it all be cast at his feet uh, let it all be you know we were not meant to carry that load we we're not designed to carry that load right and god knows that it's going to affect our emotions it's going to drain us of energy and vision and power and all that so let's just give it to him you know, just um uh, talk to the lord cleanse our hearts cast away all those cares at his feet right. uh, the third thing the third thing is uh, you know we we are tempted to of course when we let these things affect us we will we are always tempted to be judgmental to condemn to criticize and how many times you know we've heard you know people from the pulpit condemning criticizing you know, uh, somebody in the congregation, they want the message to go out. So uh, they don't do it. Maybe they don't have the bandwidth to do it one-on-one -on -one or the grace to do it one-on-one. -on -one, but, oh, from the pulpit, just you know, right from the word go, okay, condemning, criticizing, putting down, judging, and you know, all that being critical. Uh, so... That temptation is there. You see them sitting right in front of you, and and they are judging you. And now it's not the time to judge them and condemn them or criticize. Right? Okay. Here's another important thing. You know, at times, we need to be willing to be perceived as the wrongdoer. Okay. Now this is this is a difficult this is a difficult medicine to swallow because you're doing everything right. And uh, and still, the perception is that okay, you know, uh, this was this was not right, or you're the you know, you've been seen as someone who is who's the wrongdoer. You you're the one who has done things wrong. Okay, so just let's you know, read through that. Uh, First Peter two right twenty one for. To this you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he was when he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. So there is one who judges righteously, and that is God. He's not going to be biased. He's not his judgment is a righteous judgment so we commit ourselves to him now uh, you know that does not mean that you know if we need to explain things if there's an opportunity to do that and we've done that you know we're saying we, we just explored all that we've just done that we exhausted all those things right we have you know best intentions with the uh, you know we've explained okay this is why this was done and despite all that if the perception doesn't change, right? It's okay. We don't have to keep defending ourselves. We don't have to, you know, keep defending our actions. Because he's, we commit ourselves to him who judges righteously. And on the same lines, you know, we don't get back at people and we allow God to vindicate us. We allow God to bring forth our righteousness. We allow God to you know, bring forth um, the, the intentions of our heart to make it clear before man 
it's clear before God, but man doesn't perceive it. Right? Man doesn't receive it. So to make that intention clear, let God do it. Let Him indicate us. Right? So this is a this is a very important thing that uh, especially, and we're looking at transition. We're looking at transition, which is not maybe, you know, even though if it could be planned, it could be, uh, uh, it could be something that was, you know. Uh, the plan, um, but more so when it's unplanned, more so when you know it's a sudden thing and it happens and you go through it, uh, it's it can be a very, very difficult thing, right? So, we need to guard our hearts and uh, we need to really dig in and stand our ground, uh, dig in, meaning anchor ourselves to God, you know, tie ourselves to Him, anchor ourselves to the Word of God. And and say I'm not going to be moved. You know, I'm not going to let all these things corrupt me. You know, my heart is continuing to stay tender. I'm going to guard my heart. Right. Um, and uh, it, it the season will pass. Right. The season will pass. The season of transition will pass. And I like the word says transition. It is a it is a temporary thing. Right. Um, so how long is this transition? Well, it can be a you know, it can be a few days, it can be a few months, right? Um, it can even be a, you know normally it is just a few months, and uh, and then there is that adjustment that happens. There is that change. People get you know people get adjusted to the change. But having said that, you know uh, it could also you know, take a slightly longer time frame, right? especially if it is something which is, uh, let's say, um, the the change in transition. It's it's an unpleasant one. Okay, if it's unpleasant. Uh, let's say, you know, for example, uh, uh, somebody had to step down from leadership for whatever reason X, Y, Z, and then you know there is the other person who's taking up that leadership. If somebody has stepped down, somebody is stepping in. So, you know, it it may not be very, very pleasant you know, for the person who's stepping in. Right? Um, and uh, well, one thing to remind ourselves is hey, this will pass. This is transition, right? It is it is going to change and we will go into the next season. So this will pass. Okay. So to encourage oneself, to encourage ourselves, saying, okay, this will pass. This transition time will pass. And uh, yeah, so uh, one more thing before we close, to stay focused on the journey ahead. Okay, so even during this transition, initially it will go, it's going to consume a lot of time and you know, our mind space uh, as we you know, navigate the transition, you know, establishing relationship with people and maybe even having to communicate and explain why it's happening and so on but you know as we go along don't make it the main issue right focus on what is ahead right focus on the journey that's ahead and this is where we are going you know, as a team as a church as a ministry you know, this is where we are going you now let's focus on that let's start to work towards that this is the vision don't no, don't forget that it's 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 bigger than one person. It's bigger than the leader, and this is what we are here for, right? And it's, it's something that is God given, something that's God directed. So this is where we are going. Okay. Um, the the fifth one. Okay, this is the last one uh, before we take a you know we stop here. Keep the core people together. You know, like we like we uh, looked at uh, earlier. There is, you know, when we look at typically a church, um, there there is the crowd, right? And there is the community. Then we have someone who, some people who are committed. Uh, then we have the core. You know, the core is uh, core is made of people who are committed, who are committed to the cause, who are also not just committed, but committed to attending or committed to the vision, but they are also committed to carrying the load, right? They are committed to saying that, hey, I want to carry this load with you. 
Okay, the load of responsibility, the load of the weight of the vision uh, that God has given us. So I want to put my shoulder to you know to this cause in carrying this weight. So so our responsibility as leaders is to keep that core together. You know, those who seem to be like pillars in the house of God, that core leadership, the core people together. Okay, so which which means that. We need to actually engage and explain, you know, why, what, how um, about the transition. And here we are getting into the details and explaining. And while we may not have that opportunity um, with others, right? So with the core, we are actually laying everything um, open, bare, and saying, you know, this is why this is happening. This is why we are, you know, changing. And uh, and also, um, uh, so what happens is that they will carry that load. They are going to be carrying that load of transition uh, and that whole responsibility of even going through the transition by communicating, by you know encouraging others of the transition. By maybe uh, maybe there could be some prejudices, some biases, and some some fears, right? Genuine fears. Uh, well, this core is going to help in the transition by bridging all that, right? uh, by taking care of that. They're going to take care of uh, explaining to people and you know enabling people to cope with that change, cope with that transition. Right? So it's important to keep the core, uh, the leadership, the core people together. Okay. okay, we'll stop here, and I'm sure you might have questions, and uh, we'll address it in uh, the next class. Right? Okay, so thank you. God bless. Meet again.